sabotage feared as gas pours into Baltic from Nord Stream 1 and 2 pipelines. Seismologists detect spikes in undersea activity, possibly indicating explosions amid three simultaneous leaks. Ukraine is blaming Russia, saying the attack on the pipeline was terror to cut off supplies to Europe. However, the Nord Stream pipelines were not delivering gas to Europe. And for that matter, Russia controls access on their end. So it seems that whoever did this did not have control, but we really, really don't know. In the era of psychological operations and false flag attacks, we have no idea who did this or why. But online, the U.S. is suspected of having carried this out, maybe not directly, but maybe with some involvement. In a viral clip, Joe Biden said in February that if Russia invades Ukraine, the Nord Stream pipeline would be shut down. A reporter asks, but how would you do this? Europe and Russia control it. And he says, promise, I promise you it will be shut down. Now people are sharing information on a NATO operation near the island where this leak is is taking place. We've seen, let's just say there was an operation to work on mine detection. Some are suggesting it's the perfect cover for a false flag to plant the devices that were then used to detonate the pipeline and spill the gas. We don't know for sure. But my friends, either way, this is the kind of thing that can lead to serious international conflict and, dare I say, world war. At a time when we're very much concerned about a civil war in the United States, we're, we're concerned about the escalation of the conflict with Russia, which may be happening as Russia is now mobilizing 300,000 troops. And it's being reported they have the potential to mobilize up to 700,000 more people. Viral videos showing desperate Russians fleeing the country, not wanting to engage in war, but it seems like things are spiraling out of control. Jordan Peterson, I believe it was Dr. Peterson, who recently said Russia can't lose. Well, he said it's naive to think that Russia would lose because they refuse. This is a war on the Russian border. And Vladimir Putin has access to nuclear weapons. So why would he lose? If he doesn't want to, he will just use nukes. It's possible. And I don't mean blowing up London or New York or D.C. I'm talking about low yield nuclear weapons in strategic ways in Ukraine to take the territory. Now, the question is, was this really sabotage? It seems likely as seismologists detected what appears to be explosions. And if it was sabotage, as we believe it is, as many do, who did it? Well, of course, the U.S. has a motive and it seems to make the most sense. Why would Russia blow up its own pipelines when they're not even pumping gas? It's a tough question. It could be a false flag operation to frame the United States. Why would the U.S. blow it up? Well, there is actually good reason. They're Russian controlled pipelines designed to feed gas into Germany, into Europe. It's through Gazprom. Now this, it all comes together. I don't know for sure. I'm not going to pretend to have all the answers. But what I do believe is that the war in Ukraine has a lot to do with Gazprom. Gazprom runs pipelines through Europe and Belarus into Europe, and they have effectively a monopoly on gas into Europe. To go back to the beginning, I've long talked about the Qatar Turkey pipeline. The U.S. and its allies wanted to build a pipeline through Syria, Turkey into Europe to offset the Gazprom monopoly and lower prices for Europeans. However, Syria said outright, no, we will not defy our ally Russia. Lo and behold, a revolution occurs in attempt to uh, attempting to oust Assad. And the U.S., of course, opposes Assad. This had a lot to do, in my opinion, with Gazprom and, and the opinions of experts. I've just read their assessments. Ukraine then started pushing towards joining the EU and NATO. And Russia said no. Now, Nord Stream pipelines seemingly have been sabotaged, cutting off the potential for Russian gas into Europe making Europe more dependent upon, well, someone else and dramatically weakening Russia's ability to export. And let's just be real. Russia's economy is heavily dependent on exporting this gas into Europe. So what does this mean? I can't tell you much beyond that, but I can read the news and we can talk about who might behind, be behind this. And it might not be the US. This could be Russian false flags. We don't know. But let's go through the evidence and I'll talk about why people are suspecting the U.S. was involved. Before we get started, head over to TimCast.com, become a member, 
in order to support our work as a member, you'll get access to the uncensored Timcast shows as well as you will be directly supporting our journalists who work on a variety of stories all day, every day. The members only show is Monday to Thursday at 11 p.m. And our journalists are wholly supported by you as members. So if you like the work we're doing, we need your support. Becoming a member at TimCast.com. Check out the Cast Castle vlog, Tales from the Inverted World, our other shows with more to come. Smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends. Let's jump right in to the official news first, and then let's try and break down what's going on. From The Guardian, they report gas is pouring into the Baltic Sea from three separate leaks on the Nord Stream 1 and 2 pipelines. Denmark's energy agency confirmed on Tuesday amid claims by seismologists in Sweden and Denmark of two sharp spikes in undersea activity possibly indicating explosions and speculation about possible sabotage. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to show you a map. I believe we have it here of the Nord Stream pipelines. And you can see these the, the, the green line and the purple dotted line. This is Nord Stream 1 and 2. It means North Stream. And you can see both come from Russia moving through the Baltic and into Germany, both of them. Now, the, the, what, what happened is that near the island of, I think it's Brisholm. Let me make sure I can get this, uh, get this right. Bornholm, sorry, not Brisholm. Bornholm, uh, uh, Denmark is where the leaks are occurred. It's also where they detected the explosions. They say a seismograph on the Danish island of Bornholm near where the leaks occurred twice recorded spikes on Monday, the day on which the Nord Stream 1 and 2 gas pipelines underwent dramatic falls in pressure. The German Geological Research Center, GVZ, said, now take a look at this. What we have here in this image is bubbling. Now, this can suck in a, a ship of a large size. So what they said was the streak is around a kilometer. What happens when bubbles are emerging to the surface, it breaks surface tension. And when a boat goes over it, it's basically sitting over air. You just sink right in. So it's very dangerous. More importantly, it's natural gas. So there's that, too. A Danish military flight over the leaks brought back striking images from the ruptures, including one showing an area of bubbling gas a kilometer wide on the area's surface. Take a look at this. The bubbling gas, that's a kilometer. That's crazy massive. They mentioned that the seismograph recorded near silence until after midnight, 2 a.m. local time, where there was a spike representing a tremor in the earth, followed by a continuous hissing waveform. The pattern was repeated at 5 p.m. GMT. Amid the speculation over sabotage, suspicion immediately turned to potential culprits, with fingers pointed at Russia, whose pipelines were hit, suggesting a further weaponization of energy supplies to Europe in the midst of the conflict in Ukraine. Not least, it was seen as poss a possible message about the vulnerability of other marine gas infrastructure. There are some indications that it was deliberate damage. You have to ask who would profit. Let me just slow down there a minute and say, do you think we're stupid? Why would Russia blow up its own pipelines? A false flag, perhaps? Maybe. Maybe. But come on. I am less inclined to believe that. Russia, if they don't want gas going into Germany, could just turn off the pipelines. And they did. But what about taking away the negotiating power? That's why it makes more sense. It would be the US or Western interests who would blow this up and say, now you can't negotiate at all, Russia. You've lost a bargaining chip. Russia could come back and say to Germany, you give us what we want. We turn the gas back on. How about that? And maybe you start to see with protests in Europe, people saying, give Russia what they want. So they turn the gas back on and lower our prices. Lo, the pipelines burst. And now there's damage and the supply is weakened and they can't restore, uh, restore the, the gas to Europe. What are you going to protest now? Then you come out and blame Russia for doing it. Whose fault is it? Russia. They're the reason you're not getting gas. Sorry. It's hard for me to believe that Russia would blow up its own pipelines, assuming they were blown up. GVZ declined to be drawn on whether the tremors recorded could have been the result of an explosion. But scientists at the research center ruled out the possibility that the leaks could have been caused by earthquakes. Quote, there was a spike and then regular noise. A GVZ spokesperson, Yosef Zen, said, we cannot say if that could be gas streaming out. Quote from a seismologist quoted by Swedish television, uh, a, a seismologist quoted by Swedish uh, television suggested the activity may have been the result of explosions. Bjorn Lund, director of the Swedish National Seismic Network, which measures measures Swedish earthquakes, told the SVT television channel the event, one of which registered a 2.3 on the Richter scale, may have been caused by an undersea detonation. You can clearly see how the waves bounce from the bottom to the surface. There is no doubt that it was a blast. We even had a station in, how do you pronounce this? 
Nyastya, that picked this up, said Lund, who also lectures in seismology at Uppsala University. Earlier, the Danish prime minister, Matt Frederiksen, said sabotage could not be excluded. It's very concerning news, he added, calling for a prompt investigation. Indeed, we are talking about some damage of an unclear nature to the pipeline in Denmark's economic zone. All right. We don't know for sure. Javier Blas on Twitter says the subsea pipelines linking the North Sea gas fields and then Norway with the rest of the continent and the UK are among the most strategic assets right now for Europe. High time for maximum protection. Cyber attacks against energy assets are, too, a key risk for Europe. Let me let me show you this. Now, you might think it's Russia, and, I, and I'll tell you, right now, we from the BBC, Ukraine accuses Russia of pipeline terror attack. Officially, Russia is being blamed by the West for attacking their own pipeline. But that would be like Russia coming out and claiming that Bush did 9-11 or something. I just don't believe that is the most likely scenario, that a nation would destroy its own assets. Now, you can talk about a lot of reasons why they might. Maybe that maybe they're trying to send a message that they're not going to give the gas back. I don't understand why they would eliminate their own leverage. It makes no sense. And then Reuters, February 8th, 2022. If Russia invades Ukraine, there will be no Nord Stream 2, Biden says. Now, hold on there a minute. If Russia invades Ukraine, there will be no Nord Stream 2. February 8th. Well, Russia did invade Ukraine. This is not talking about shutting down. It's talking about eliminating. Let me show you the video from townhall.com. Let me play for you this video. First question. Let me answer the first question first. If Germany, if uh, if Russia invades, uh, that means tanks or troops crossing the uh, the the border of Ukraine again, then uh, there will be uh, we there will be no longer North Stream 2. We, we will bring an end to it. Full stop. He said, we will bring an end to it. He didn't say we will cancel the contracts. He didn't say we will suspend the gas. He said we will bring an end to it. Here we go. But, but how, will you, how will you do that exactly since the project and control of the project is within Germany's control? We will. Uh, I promise you we'll be able to do it. And then he smirks. I promise you we'll be able to do it. Sorry, I'm not going to believe that the simple solution on this on, uh, uh, to this is that Russia blew up their own pipeline after Biden had already threatened there will not be a Nord Stream 2. Now, that's interesting. Now, a lot of people responded. And I'm seeing these tweets go around. This one's interesting. From NATO.INT, the ball tops 22 a perfect opportunity for research and testing new technology. They say, June 12th, 2022, a significant focus of ball tops every year is the demonstration of NATO mine hunting capabilities. And this year, the U.S. Navy continues to use the exercise as an opportunity to test emerging technology. They say, in support of ball tops, U.S. Navy Sixth Fleet partnered with U.S. Navy Research and Warfare Centers to bring the latest advancements in unmanned underwater vehicle mine hunting technology to the Baltic Sea to demonstrate the vehicle's effectiveness in operational scenarios. Experimentation was conducted off the coast of Bornholm, Denmark, with participants from Naval Information Warfare Center Pacific, Naval Undersea Warfare Center Newport, and Mine Warfare Readiness and Effectiveness Measuring, all under the direction of U.S. Sixth Fleet Task Force 68. Quote, In prior ball tops, we demonstrated advanced capabilities to detect, reacquire, and collect images of mine contacts and transfer those images in near real time to operators through the use of a specialized office of Naval Research UUV, said Anthony Constable, Office of Naval Research Science Advisor of the U.S. Sixth Fleet. This year, through the work of NIWC Pacific and NUWC Newport, we are showing that the capability can be integrated into programs of record by executing complex multi-vehicle UUV missions with modified U.S. Navy fleet assets. I don't know if this means anything. And a lot of people are going to see this and speculate. We have this photo. This is Lieutenant J.G. Chris Bianchi, assigned to Explosive Ordnance Disposal Mobile Unit. Eight, prepares mock explosives for a peer side training event during exercise Ball Tops 2020, uh, 2022, June 10th, 2022. Could it be that under the guise of mine detection, they had mock mines and explosives 
and they used the opportunity off of Bornholm to plant bombs. Could be, could be, but we don't know for sure. We don't. This could very much be, if you want to speculate, you could speculate that Russia, knowing ball tops happened, chose this location as a target for a false flag attack to claim they've been attacked. And I'll tell you why that may make sense. Nord Stream 2 delivers, 1 and 2, they deliver gas from Russia into Germany. Right now, Russia is trying to conscript people to join the war effort, and we are seeing them flee in the masses. Now, I don't know how much of these videos are true. For all we know, it's all bunk BS. However, Russia needs a morale boost. And what would the purpose of, a, of, of bombing this pipeline be for the U.S.? For one, to eliminate Russian leverage in negotiations, negotiations with Germany, as I mentioned. If the pipelines don't work at all, Russia can't offer anything in exchange for surrender. Not necessarily surrender to Ukraine, but they could say, stop supporting them, we'll bring the gas back. But there's also this. Russia has now been attacked and they have everything to gain from being attacked at a time when they need public support for this war. We will not know who did this. You can make up any reason in the books why it's the U.S. or it's Russia. But I will say I will not lean towards it being Russia. I just think when you're starting off by saying someone attacked themselves, you extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. And right now what we know is This is closer to Germany, where Western forces are, Western powers are. The Navy was conducting operations there. I'm not saying it's proof anything happened, but I'm saying if you want to call it 51 to 49, it leans towards the U.S. having done this because Joe Biden said we would end it. Why would I believe it was anyone else when Biden comes out and says we're going to end it? It will be ended. Well, okay, then when it ends, sounds like it's on you. Is it possible that Russia is exploiting this as a false flag? Sure. But if it's within the U.S. interest to end the Nord Stream pipelines, they said they would and then they ended. Why would I assume it's anyone else? And you get these stories coming out like Ukraine blaming Russia for this. Now, of course, Ukraine needs their propaganda all the same, which is why I don't think propaganda efforts alone are enough for me to believe that Russia did this to themselves. The BBC reports Ukraine has accused Russia of causing leaks in two major gas pipelines to Europe in what it described as a terror attack. Ukrainian, Ukrainian presidential advisor Mykolo Podol, uh, Podoliak said the damage to Nord Stream 1 and 2 was an act of aggression toward the EU. He added that Russia wanted to cause pre-winter panic and urged the EU to increase military, military support to Ukraine. That's actually not a bad reason, but reason alone isn't enough. If a bank gets robbed, And there is a guy who is broke who lives next to that bank. And there is a guy who is not broke who bragged about how he was going to rob the bank. I'm not going to go after the other guy. Or a better example is a guy lives next to the bank. He's broke and he's demanding the bank release his frozen funds. The other guy was sitting back being like, if this guy tries to demand his funds back, we're going to rob the bank. I'm like, okay, well, that guy clearly did it, right? At least that's who you assume. Ukraine, of course, is now using this to demand the EU to request to urge the EU to increase its military support for Ukraine. Both sides are going to say the same things. But pre-winter panic is not a bad reason. Russia, if they were to cause damage to their own pipelines and frame the US, could then tell Europe, they could say, if you're suffering to the people of Europe, if you don't have gas, it's because they attacked us. It's a good reason to stage a false flag, isn't it? The operator of Nord Stream 1, said the undersea lines had simultaneously sustained unprecedented damage in one day. Denmark's Defense Command has released footage of the leaks, which shows bubbles the surface. Now we know the pipelines were not operational. They weren't. So gas wasn't coming in anyway. Yo, I think if I were to make a bet, if I had to, I'd say the West did this, not Russia. This is taking away key leverage for Europe because they could get Europe to back off. They could turn the pipelines back on. I don't think Nord Stream 2 was ever activated. I'm not not sure. Nord Stream 1 was delivering gas. Now it can't. Now Russia has nothing to offer. So what does Europe do? They go to the West and say, "Okay, we need energy. What do we do? Biden says, all right, man, we're going to release strategic oil reserves to lower the cost and bring you energy and force you to back away from Russia. Now, here's here's one of the one of the the theories. Germany and Russia were negotiating 
behind the U.S. the U.S.'s back. And the U.S. needed a way to stop this. So they did. Again, I don't know for sure, but that's at least one one working theory that I think makes the most sense. Now, back on September 2nd, we saw this from The Guardian. Nord Stream 1, Gazprom announces indefinite shutdown of pipeline. Russian energy company had been due to resume gas delivery to Germany on Saturday morning. The Russian energy uh, major Gazprom extended the shutdown of gas flows through its Nord Stream 1 pipeline to Germany on Friday evening, providing no time frame for reopening. The move comes hours after G7 countries agreed to impose a price cap on Russian oil. A tit for tat as it was. In the image, we can see Russia's gas supply routes to Europe. We can see here that we've got three major lines running through Ukraine. You've got the Progress, the Northern Lights, and the Soyuz. You've also got down through, uh, I believe this is the, uh, the Black Sea. Is it the Black Sea? You've got Blue Stream and Turk Stream. And that's going into Southeast Europe. And it's also going in, Blue Stream, I believe, is going into, I think they're both going into Turkey, actually. They're both going into Turkey. You then have this, uh, um, the Yamal Europe line going from, uh, from Russia into Belarus through Poland to Germany. There still is a path for energy to, re- to, to make its way into Europe. But we can see the Nord Stream line has been shut down. I believe this has been the main reason for this war. But I got to be honest, there's probably big reasons why we won't know for sure. I don't have access to confidential information, top secret information. So what we see on the surface about these gas pipelines may just be that surface information. We just don't know. Fortune.com. It's the worst ever collapse of the pound, but far from the first. Here's a look back at the biggest sterling shocks all the way back to 1971. The pound is down. It's near uh, dollar parity, meaning the British economy is in trouble. It's around a dollar seven. A buck here is a, is a pound seven over in Europe. That's crazy. Or I'm, so, uh, I'm sorry, a, 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 a dollar seven here is a pound over in Europe. I had it backwards. The euro is also tanking. Now, that's not all bad news for, for the United States. This could actually be good news. And you have to wonder about this. Here's the big conspiracy. You want the big, big conspiracy? Russia's in on it. That's the big conspiracy. Now, I don't believe it, but there are some people that are circulating a theory that the Rush, Russia's war with Ukraine is energy control, energy reduction. I mean, think about it. Russia goes to war with Ukraine. People in Europe are then no longer using gas for some reason. Russia then shuts off gas to Europe. There's all these sanctions. Gas is way down. Farmers are told to stop farming. Whether Russia's in, it, Russia's in, an, in on it or not, this is really good for globalization. You see, now the euro and the pound are dropping to the same levels as the dollar. And why both the pound and the euro? Well, for one, the European economy is being shocked by war. Sure, that's the simple answer. But the conspiracy theorists think, look, in order to create globalization or unified economic bloc, you need to stabilize currencies to the same level. That's happening. So whether intentional or not, this is good for big, I don't know, for, for international trade, as it were, normalizing economies and labor value and all that stuff. But we'll see. It doesn't mean much beyond that. And I think that's a really far reached, the far reaching theory. The only thing that can be said is that it's going to get bad. Right now, let's go back to the fear of sabotage. We have that tweet from Javier Blas saying cyber attacks against energy assets are too a key risk for Europe. When I've in the past talked about the threat of industrial control system attacks, fifth generational warfare, fourth generational, I believe, I was told that it was no, no, it's impossible, and it's crazy, it's crazy. We saw a uh, refinery explode, I believe it was in Philadelphia, around the exact same time that Donald Trump had a strike group, aircraft headed towards Iran. Trump said he called off the strike because too many people would have died and it wasn't worth it. But shortly before, I believe shortly before the attack was called off, a refinery in Philadelphia exploded. To a normal person, you would assume it's just an accident. Malfunction, perhaps. But I've interviewed security experts discussing industrial control systems, and I've seen the demonstrations. Through the internet, they can blow up critical infrastructure. The U.S. did it with Stuxnet. We saw Iranian centrifuges explode. And it is now known Israel and the United States collaborated on a worm that eventually made its way into the computers in Iran, which caused the Iranian centrifuges to explode. 
The virus did nothing on normal machines, but once it found the centrifuges, it caused them to spin uncontrollably until they detonated, until they, maybe detonated isn't the right word, but until they blew up, overheated and collapsed. Cyber attacks are real. And if you think that's the only time they have done it, you'd be wrong. Which brings me to another theory. Fire breaks out at world's largest produce market in Paris. Interesting. Captain Marc Lemoyne, spokesperson for the Paris fire, said no one was injured. The fire was brought under control and there was no risk of it spreading from the soccer field sized warehouse covering an area of 7000 square meters. That's crazy. The cause of the blaze was unknown, but will be investigated. The reality? Sometimes fires happen. Could it be that people have been setting fires across Europe? We have seen a lot of churches get burned down, but who knows? As for this market, could have been an individual act of sabotage. Most likely an accident. Fires happen. But I think it's important we pay attention at a time when oil pipelines are blown up because you won't know unless they want you to know. It's an important thing you need to understand. When you were being, uh, I, I, my friend, he worked in uh, cybersecurity and, and uh, infosec stuff, information security. He said, look, if you figure out you're being followed, they want you to know you're being followed. It's more of a message than anything. Crazy stories, man. Crazy stories from my security expert friends. He, was, he called me one day huffing and puffing, panting. And uh, he was at a bar in, I think it was San Diego. And he said a couple of guys were staring at him and he noticed. So he decided to leave. He leaves. He walks down about a block and then notice they come out and start walking towards him. So he turns the corner, then goes in a full sprint, turns into an alley and ducks behind a dumpster. And then those guys he sees go running past. They were following him. They were spying on him. He was, he's a guy who had done a bunch of security with international interests, to say, say the least. And perhaps they wanted to interrogate him, as it were. Or who knows what? Who knows what they would have done to him? But anyway, my point here is this. If you're actively involved in this kind of work, then I'll say just because you're paranoid, it doesn't mean they're not after you. You might think, nah, I'm being paranoid. There's nobody. There's nobody. But maybe at some point you should consider the real possibility. Now we scale that up. When you're actively involved in a ground war, when NATO is supplying weapons and resources to the Ukrainians, much to the chagrin of Russia, don't be surprised if Russia starts to attack your critical infrastructure. So could it be that Russia attacked Nord Stream? For sure. The project isn't all Russia's. I think it's silly because Russia could just say, no, we're not going to give you gas. And that's what they're doing. And I don't believe it's the simple answer, but it is possible. It absolutely is. One big factor here. Take a look at this story from the Daily Mail. Putin squirms in his seat as Belarus dictator Lukashenko rants about men running away from mobilization in Russia as huge traffic jams on Georgia border are captured in images from space. The Belarusian president monologued and spouted rhetorical questions in his rant to Putin today in Sochi. Putin sat silently, clearly uncomfortable as he listened to his counterpart insisting that Russia would win the war. The call for mobilization has proved wildly unpopular throughout Russia, sparking protests and a mass exodus. But what if Russia were to be attacked? What if following this attempt at mobilizing, a Russian pipeline was destroyed? Putin could then come out and say, you need to fight. They are destroying our motherland. They are attacking our resources, our interests. You must. That could be the morale boost they needed. Public support for the war I assume will go up following this. In Russia, no doubt they are right now claiming that this was an act of sabotage from the West to disable their ability to make money, to set them back and to hurt the Russian people. I think so. In the meantime, four Russian warships and three Chinese naval ships, including a guided missile cruiser, are spotted off the coast of Alaska. You're not going to know. We fancy ourselves so smart. We think that because we have modern technology and radio, we just know what's happening. But you don't. We don't know what just happened here. We got word very quickly that the pipeline was damaged. We assume it's sabotage. The media does. Security experts think it think it was sabotage. But we didn't find out until some time afterwards that something happened, despite the fact that we have access to all this information. I've been watching Breaking Bad and uh, Better Call Saul. I finished Breaking Bad. I thought it was okay. I think Better Call Saul is way better. I love the characters in the show. They're really well written, especially in Better Call Saul. 
there is a, a, a plot element in both shows about dead drops. And I'm watching this, uh, uh, this scene where, you know, early in the show, they're doing dead drops. You know, Jesse Pinkman, the younger guys, they put the drugs in like a gutter and then like a, a, a gutter pipe. And then someone shows up later and then takes it out and puts the money in or something. The funny thing is how effective it is to leave a random item in a random place and not have to worry about someone finding it, because that's the reality. You could walk into a big empty field knowing full well that there is a box full of gold buried somewhere in it. But you come in a 10 acre field and you're going to be going, Ugh, where do you even begin to look? Now, with enough energy and resources, you might be able to find that hidden box of gold. But somebody who knows exactly where it is, it, it takes zero energy, zero. They walk up, they say, you walk 10 paces, there's, a, there's a, a rock that looks like a pyramid, and right below it is a box of gold. But if you knew that box was there and you walked in that field, you'd have no idea. You'd have to search every which way up and down. Where would you even begin? So you could literally hide something in plain sight, but in a large enough space. What I mean, what, why I bring that up is that when it comes to this war, is that we think we know. We think we know what's possible and what's not possible. But in reality, one guy can mosey on over in a tiny little boat, drop some explosive device, and that's it. And no one will have seen it coming. And no one will know what happened or when, despite the fact that someone walked up and did it. Because it's just too big a space. Maybe if we've got global spy satellites tracking every single person all the time, but that's just not possible, at least not yet. What I think you may be looking at with the Russian patrol ships and Chinese around Alaska. Don't be surprised if there's not retaliation. Russia may retaliate even if it is a false flag. It's an opportunity to be like they attacked us. But I got to tell you, an attack like this, it's an escalation towards World War Three, whether you want to hear it or not. Whether it's a false flag from Russia or maybe not even a false flag. Maybe Russia just attacking the pipeline, which I don't, I don't see why they would. Or maybe it was a direct act of sabotage from the West. Either way, this is cause for escalation. So we'll wait and see. Next segment's coming up at 8 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcastirl. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.